Good morning everyone. Hope everyone is doing well and uh, welcome to the class. Today we are moving into a new chapter that is biomolecules. So when you are looking into this biomolecules chapter, this is something to deal with chemistry, right? So you will be learning in detail regarding this chapter in your class 12 chemistry. But as of now, we are going to confine ourselves to biomolecules that is the molecules which are present inside the living organism. The chemical structure, all those things in detail you will be learning in your class 12. Chemical structure we are not bothering much but we should know what all molecules are present inside the body of a living organism. What all molecules are present inside our body, isn't it? So that's what this chapter is dealing with, the biomolecules. Okay, so let's go into the chapter. Now when you are seeing this biomolecules, sir, first in the beginning what they are doing is that they are comparing the chemical composition. Like in a living organism, what all chemical compositions are present, what all chemical substances are present, what all molecules, compounds are present, that is to some extent similar to that of the earth crust. Okay? So they are saying the earth crust, whatever molecules you can find, whatever minerals, um, that uh, organic compounds and organic compounds you can find in the earth crust, to some extent they are also present in the living organism, in the body of the living organism. But they are saying that one exception is the carbon and hydrogen concentration is more in living organism compared to that of the earth crust. Okay, so most probably you can find in the earth crust what all compounds you can find. Mostly they are also found in the living organism. Not all, but to some extent mostly they are found. Okay, but in living organism which is more, the carbon and the hydrogen concentrations are more compared to that of the earth crust. Now. If I want to learn what all molecules are present in my body or if it is present in a plant or any animals, what molecules are present? We have to go for analysis, isn't it? So for that, analyzing of chemical composition of living organisms, there are two analyses present, okay? So one is the chemical analysis and the second one is your ash analysis. So first is what the chemical analysis and the second one is your uh, ash analysis, okay? Now, what is chemical analysis of organic compounds? So, I want to find out uh, this plant material, what and all is present. So, what I have to do for chemical analysis? First, I will take out that plant material, the parts of the plant, to some extent, the leaves or the stem, whatever I am taking it out. Then, what I am going to do is that, I am going to put it in a mortar, okay? Like, uh, uh, what is that? For? A mixer, like, okay? For um, means of beating ginger, clove and all you use it, isn't it? So like that mortar and pestle, you know. So this mortar is taken in that the material has been put. Then they are adding a chemical solution. What is the name of the chemical? It is trichloroacetic acid. Okay, so trichloroacetic acid has been added. So that uh, like instead of water we are adding water. Trichloroacetic acid. Then we are mixing it, we are grinding it very nicely, understood? So it is forming a slurry paste like structure, it is being formed. Till that I will be nicely uh, mixing it, grinding it, okay? So after this, what I get? I get two substances, okay? What I am going to get, listen. So this mortar and mortar, I am taking out the solution what I have got. Next what I am going to do, I am going to take a filter paper or a cotton mess I am taking, okay? Into it, I am just, I am taking a beaker, into it I am uh, keeping a filter paper. Thereafter what I am doing, I am pouring this uh, thing, what I have got in the water, I am just pouring it in. Okay, so what will happen, some of the substances which are dissolved in that acids, so acid soluble substances, what they will happen, so they will dissolve in it and they will pass through the filter paper and they will be collected into the beaker. Isn't it? And on the filter you can find some parts which was acid insoluble, it was not dissolved in the acid, so it was not broken down and those parts are found where? On the filter paper. So I am getting two parts. So what are the two parts? One is the acid soluble part. The acid soluble part we call it as what? The filtrate. The filtered one, the solution what I am getting in the beaker is that filtrate. And what is uh, the other one acid insoluble on the filter paper on the top of it is present? That is your retentate. Okay, so what is that retentate? So retentate is the acid insoluble part. Is that clear? So these are the two portions which I get when I go for this chemical analysis. Now what 
what I will do? I will study the written date as well as the filled rate, what and all is present inside it by different analytical separation techniques like chromatography, filtration, titration, all these things we are going to undergo and then they study what? The different substances, the different molecules which are present in it. They separate out different molecules and then they go for analysis of the chemical structure. Okay, how it look like. So that is regarding what? That is regarding the chemical analysis of organic compound. Now the next is your ash analysis. So for inorganic compounds, they usually go for this ash analysis. For ash analysis, what do they do? Listen, any uh, part of a plant, if I want to analysis, what is present, what are the minerals present in it? Okay, what are the inorganic substances that are present in it? First, I will do go for what? I will go for drying it. So initially I will take the plant material, whether it is a leaf or a stem, I am taking it, then I am weighing it. So that will be called as what the initial weight. What do we call them? We call them as the initial weight. Then what we do? We used to leave it to dry. Let it dry. Okay. So uh, the, till the, all the waters are getting evaporated, we are making it to dry totally. And then we are weighing it. That will be called as what the final weight. Okay. So when this uh, things uh, when the, uh, mostly the weight will be reduced. Okay. So thereafter what I will do, that dried material I am collecting and then I am burning it. Okay. So when I am burning it, that material is converted into ashes. This carbon dioxide, hydrogen and all will be evolved as water vapor, carbon dioxide will be moving out. The rest of the particles when you are seeing the inorganic substances, mostly they won't, isn't it? So they will remain in the ash. And thereafter with the different separation techniques, we can study the ash, what are the materials that are present in the ash. So this we call it as what? Ash analysis. So in order to study the chemical composition of a cell or a plant or an animal, I can go for two analysis. One is chemical analysis and second one is your ash analysis. Okay. Now moving on to the chapter, the main biomolecules of cells. Okay. Now when you are seeing this biomolecules, means molecules which are present inside a living organism. This biomolecules can be of two types. So what are the two types of biomolecules? One is the biomicromolecule and other one is here biomacromolecules. As the name suggests, what do you mean by the term micro? Micro means it is very very small. And what do you mean by the term macro? It is bigger. Comparatively bigger. So, if the molecule is having less weight, like below 10,000 uh, Daltons, okay, below 1,000 Daltons, if it is weighing, then I put that molecule as biomicro molecule, okay? Easily soluble one. And the other one, which is more than 1,000, 1,000 or more than 1,000 Daltons, then I put them as what? I put them as biomacro molecules. So, which are weighing less, below 1000 Daltons, I put it as biomicromolecules and which are more, I put it as what? I put it as biomicromolecules. Okay. Now, it has been found, when I am making these two fractions, I am getting one filtrate, which is the acid soluble one, which is getting dissolved, converted into simpler forms, isn't it? So, the simpler forms, obviously, they will be having a very less weight. So, the filtrate are usually what? They are biomicromolecules. So examples of these biomicromolecules, if it is asked, what are the organic biomicromolecules? Like you are having sugar, disaccharide, monosaccharide, glucose, fructose, sucrose and there are the amino acids. Okay, then nucleotides, uh, nucleotides you are having, isn't it? Uh, that is the nitrogenous bases we have learned in DNA, uh, D9, guanine, thymine, cytosin. All those are biomicromolecules because they are weighing very, very less. Okay. And inorganic substances like your sulfates, phosphates are also coming under what? Biomicromolecules. Where it will be present? It will be mostly present in the filtrate. That is the acid soluble component of the chemical analysis. Okay. And the next one is your written tape. The one which is present on the filter paper, which is not getting filtered. So that one we call it as what the written tape. That written date obviously is made up of some bigger particles. Okay. So that bigger particles we call it as what? Biomacromolecules. Okay. So these biomacromolecules, in that you can also find one of the biomicromolecules that is lipids. Lipids actually is a biomicromolecule. But 
they are not dissolved in water. They cannot be getting dissolved in the acid solution because of which they will be present along with the biomicromolecules as a retentate. Okay. But lipids are what? Biomicromolecules. But they will be present along with the biomicromolecules when you are going for chemical analysis. You have to make a note of the same. Okay. Other than that, in the biomicromolecules, in the written date, what and all we can find? Biomicromolecules, what are they? Bigger size, having high molecular weight. So what are they? The simplest form of the proteins is amino acids. So the heavier forms are proteins, isn't it? So proteins. Then the simplest form is glucose for carbohydrate. The higher forms, the heavier forms are polysaccharides. Okay. Then DNA, RNA. When you are saying they are made up of many nucleotides, nitrogenous bases. So they are, they are simple. But when you are saying this nucleic acids, that is the DNA and the RNA, they are bigger forms. Okay. So the bigger forms are proteins, polysaccharides, nucleic acids, which are coming under what? The biomacromolecules. In detail regarding biomicromolecules and biomacromolecules, we are going to discuss now. For today's class, we will be discussing in detail regarding bio-micro-molecules. So, let's move into the world of bio-micro-molecules. Okay? So, we have already discussed about the analysis of chemical composition of any living material. We can do it in two ways. One is the chemical analysis and another one is your ash analysis, isn't it? So, in the chemical analysis, we learned about the filtrate and that is the acid soluble fraction and the written date that is the acid insoluble fraction. Now we are moving on to the bio micro molecules. As I have already said they are very less means uh, their uh, weight when you are saying molecular weight it may vary from 18 to 6, 800 Daltons. So less than 1000 Daltons we can categorize them as what? We can categorize them as bio micro molecules. Okay. Now this bio micro molecules when you see it is divided into 4 types okay so what are the four parts of these bio micro molecules the first one is your sugar the second one is your lipids third is your amino acids and the fourth one is your heterocyclic compounds so moving on to the first one that is the sugar the carbohydrates so the carbohydrate you know they are can be complex form like polysaccharides or it can be simple forms the simple forms of carbohydrates are coming under this bio micro molecules uh, two that is one is monosaccharides and another one is disaccharides what do you mean by monosaccharides they are only having one sugar molecule that is glucose c6 h12o6 glucose when you see they do have only one sugar molecule okay so then a uh, one monomer unit that we call it as what monosaccharides and what is disaccharides they are having two sugar molecules like when you are seeing sucrose it is uh, c12h22o11 so automatically when you are seeing they are having two monomers combined together that's why the name is disaccharides so this monosaccharides as well as disaccharides are coming under which one it is coming under the category of carbohydrate the biomolecule which is the sugar so when you can find you can find this is glucose and this is ribose okay so these are some uh, monosaccharides this is disaccharides you can find two complexes here you can find only one unit but here you can find two they are linked together by a bond, isn't it? So when there is two, then it is di. And when there is only one ring, then we call it as what? We call it as monosaccharides, okay? So this is uh, shapes, you need not bother because uh, in chemistry you will be learning. But you should know how does it look like, okay? Now, next we are moving on to the next topic that is lipids, okay? So lipids, when you are seeing the lipids are of different types. So what are the different types of lipids? First is your fatty acid, second is your glycerol, third is your esters of fatty acid with glycerol and then you are having phospholipids and cholesterol. So these are all different types of lipids. Lipids you know usually we use the term fats isn't it? So these lipids when you are seeing this fatty acids, fatty acid is a form of lipid, it can be of two types. One is saturated fatty acids and another one is unsaturated fatty acid. So, what is the difference between saturated and unsaturated? 
saturated when you see they do not have a double bond between the carbon atoms okay so here when you are seeing between the carbon atoms uh, there is no double bond present they are just attached with one single bond only that's why it is saturated when between the carbon atoms you can find double bond are present see double bond c so in that case we categorize them under unsaturated fatty acids okay so <coughs> saturated they do not have a double bond unsaturated they do have a double bond between the carbons okay between some of the carbons they have a double bond other than that what are the differences between the saturated and the unsaturated unsaturated when you are seeing they are liquid at room temperature they are liquid liquid means you know um, means uh, they are somewhat watery in nature and uh, they are mostly found where it is found in the plants so where you can find it you can find it in the plants okay and saturated fatty acids when you are seeing means uh, uh, you can find it like uh, vanaspati uh, dalda like ghee and all so that is saturated fatty acid they are usually solid at room temperature and they are mostly found where it is found in the animals okay so these are the different types of what the uh, fatty acids it can be of two types that is saturated and unsaturated so hope this is clear next when you are seeing the next fatty acid what we are going to see next uh, lipid it is glycerol okay the structure of uh, glycerol i will show you how the glycerol will be looking like so the glycerol is looking like this another one um, so this is the structure of the glycerol it is a form of what lipid another one form is esters of fatty acid with glycerol okay so what are they they can be categorized into three so what are the three types there one is monoglycerides second one is diglycerides and other one is triglycerides so esters of fatty acid and glycerol is also a form of lipid can be categorized into three types mono di and triglycerides so the structure you can find this is monoglyceride this is diglyceride and this one is triglyceride structure as i have already said need not bother much but for understanding how it looks like i am just sharing it okay so um, that is regarding your esters of fatty acid with glycerol then the another one lipid is your phospholipid lecithin is an example for phospholipid means lipids having the phosphorus phosphate ion in them okay so that one we call it as what phospholipid how does a phospholipid look like now this is phospholipid you can find they have what a phosphorus atom there okay so that's why we call it as what the phospholipid lipid with a phosphorus pet ion or phosphorus uh, atom okay and then the last one is your cholesterol cholesterol everyone knows cholesterol is a form of lipid a form of fat and how does the chemical structure of cholesterol look like it look like this okay so this is again a form of lipids so we have discussed the different forms of lipids so what are the different forms of lipids once again there are fatty acid it can be of two types one is saturated found in animal solid at room temperature unsaturated found in plants liquid at room temperature unsaturated fatty acids when you are seeing they contain a double bond between carbon and uh, saturated they do not contain okay and then glycerol we saw another type of fat uh, lipids then esters of fatty acids in that three we discussed and they even discussed about phospholipids and then the cholesterol okay these triglycerides it can be a uh, fats or it can be oils okay so oils when you see they have a low melting point but fats when you are seeing they are having a high melting point you have to make a note triglyceride can further be classified into fats and oil fats are having high melting point example is your butter and oils are having what the low melting point any oil gingelly oil is an example which has been listed here okay the next topic what we are going to discuss is amino acids so we have covered sugar we have covered lipids now we are moving on to amino acids okay so this amino acid when you see this amino acid is having some groups one group is your amino group one is the hydrogen group central there is a carbon atom and then you are having what acid group and a r group okay so you can find uh, to the central carbon atom four groups are there so what are the four groups amino group one hydrogen atom there after you can find the acid group oco which is acid functional group isn't it and this r group this r can be of different types this are based on the 
uh, R which is present, the R group, the amino acid can be of 20 different types new are being discovered also. Now this uh, amino acids, this R group can be a methyl group like for example I will show you like you can find here if it is only H then it is glycine an amino acid, if it is methyl then it is alanine, if it is hydroxymethyl then it is serine. So this uh, R group when you are seeing it changes from one amino acid to another the rest mostly they remains the same ok. So based on the R groups there are different types of what amino acids. So R is unique to each amino acid, the rest is a common one the uh, amino group the uh, hydrogen and carboxylic acid group is uh, common for all ok. So this amino acid can be divided into four basic types. So what are the four basic types one is the acidic amino acid, the second one is your basic amino acid. The third is your neutral amino acid and the fourth is your aromatic amino acid. So acidic amino acid means what? They are acidic in nature, you know what is acid isn't it? So they are having the pH range below 7 and if it is 7 then it is neutral and if it is above 7 it is basic or alkaline we use the term isn't it? So acidic amino acid example is glutamic acid, basic amino acid example is lysine, neutral amino acid example is what? Valine. So these are the different types of amino acids based on their pH ok. And now another one amino acid is present which we call it as aromatic amino acid. As the name suggests what do you mean by the term aromatic, aromatic means they are having a pleasant uh, smell ok, they have a particular smell. So that amino acid we call it as what aromatic amino acid for that example has been given one is your tryptophan another one is uh, your tyrosine ok. So these are aromatic amino acids. So what are the different types of amino acid it is acidic, basic, neutral and aromatic ok. Now the structural form is the peculiar characteristics of this amino acid. So amino acids when you are seeing they do perform means they can um, exist in different structural forms. So what are the structural form? One is your fully protonated form, fully protonated means what? They have a net gain of a positive ion, so they have a plus charge ok. So when you are seeing here you can find this is having what the plus charge isn't it. So this is fully protonated form they are having a positive ion and excess. So this we call it as what fully protonated form you know plus is more. Now uh, Zwit, the other one is deprotonated, deprotonated means you know they have a net negative charge more ok. So an, an electron is more than that of the proton so that is why it is COO minus so they have a minus charge in them. So then we call them as what the deprotonated form this is the protonated form having a net positive charge this is deprotonated form having a negative charge and another one form is the Zwitter ionic form they possess both positive charged and negatively charged nature. So you can find uh, NH3 plus COO minus, so both are present, so minus as well as pres are present. So this form we call it as what, Zwitter ionic form which is exhibiting both the, uh, what is that, uh, forms, both the charges, okay, positive as well as negative. So this one we call it as what, Zwitter ionic form. So what are the structural forms of amino acid, there are three, what, what are they? One is fully protonated form having a net positive charge, deprotonated form having a net negative charge and Zwitter ionic form which is having both positive as well as a negative charge ok. So this is regarding your amino acids. Next we are moving on to the last, uh, so what and all we have discussed, we have discussed about sugar done right, then we discussed about lipids done, amino acids done. Now we are moving on to heterocyclic compounds is also a form of biomicromolecules. So uh, this heterocyclic compounds are can be divided into three types. The simplest one is your nitrogenous bases. When this nitrogenous bases is combining with the sugar they are forming nucleoside a bit complex and when this nitrogenous bases with sugar is combining with another one which is phosphorus ok phosphate or phosphoric group then it becomes what it becomes nucleotides. 
So heterocyclic compounds can be divided into three categories. One is your nitrogenous bases, the simplest one, nucleoside, a bit complex, more complex, nucleotides, okay. So one is sides and another one is tides. The first one is sides, S-I-D-E. This is TIDE. Okay. So, nitrogenous bases, this we have learned when we were ha having that uh, bridge course, isn't it? The DNA molecule when you were learning. These nitrogenous bases can be of two types. So, what are the two types of nitrogenous bases? One is your purine and another one is your pyrimidin. This purine, when you are saying they are of two types again, one is adenine and another one is guanine. So, these adenine and guanine is having two rings. Okay. Then, Another one nitrogenous base is your pyrimidin. Again, it is also divided into cytosin, thiamine, uracil, and all. Now, when you are seeing this uh, thiamine, thiamine is what? Thiamine is your one ring, and cytosin is also having one ring. So, this is pyrimidin. One is purine, and another one is what? One other one is pyrimidin. Okay. So, heterocyclic compounds, when you are seeing, they are adenine, guanine is purine, pyrimidin, cytosin, thiamine. In case of DNA, it is uh, like, uh, sorry, in case of RNA, it is uracil. Okay, it's not thiamine, it will be uracil. So, that's why uracil is again a pyrimidin. Okay, so this is regarding your nitrogenous bases. Now, when this adenine is combining with the sugar, then they will become what? Adenosin. This sugar can be ribose sugar. In case of RNA, it is ribose sugar. You can find the structure. And in case of DNA, it will be deoxyribo sugar. Okay. So one is your ribo sugar and another one is your deoxyribo sugar. So this is your ribo sugar here and this one is your deoxyribo sugar. One oxygen is missing. That's why it is deoxyribo sugar. Okay. So this is here present in DNA and this one is present in RNA, the sugar ones. Now when you are seeing this, uh, so based on that, if adenine is combining with the sugar molecule, it becomes adenosin. Guanine is combining with the sugar, then it becomes guanosin. Then you can find cytosine is combining with sugar, it becomes cytidin. And if it is thiamine combining, it is thiamidin. And if it is uracil combining, then it becomes uridin. So like this, these are all nucleosides. They are having din, din, din ending. Okay. So based on the names, you just have to change it accordingly. So nucleosides, when is nucleoside forms? When nitrogenous bases combine with either ribose sugar or deoxyribose sugar, they become nucleoside. Now, this nucleoside, when they are combining with the phosphate ion, they are becoming what? They are becoming nucleotides. So, they are becoming acidic forms. Okay. So, adenine, adenosine will turn into, when it is combining with phosphorus, what it will turn into? It will turn into adenylic acid. Gonosine will turn into guanylic acid. Cytidin will turn into cytidylic acid. Thiamidin will turn into thiamidylic acid. And uridin will turn into uridylic acid. So, these are the nucleosides. Okay. So, in DNA, we have already learned when you are seeing cytosine always pairs with guanine, adenine always pairs with thiamine. This adenine, when it is cytosine or any nitrogenous bases, when they are combining with the blue one, that is the sugar, they are becoming what? They are becoming nucleoside, isn't it? And when this is combining with phosphorus, okay. So, what and all is there? One is the nitrogenous bases plus sugar it is nucleoside when it is combining with phosphorus again they are becoming what nucleotide so here when you are seeing this diagram this is your see nitrogenous base combining with sugar nucleoside when they are combining with green phosphorus they are becoming what they are becoming nucleotides okay so when you are seeing this dna the dna is made up of simpler units called as what nucleotides the nucleotide is made up of nucleosides and the nucleoside is when you are seeing they are made up of nitrogenous bases okay so nitrogenous base when they combine with sugar they form nucleoside and when they combine with phosphorus that uh, the whole nucleoside when they combine with phosphorus they become nucleotide with this the heterocyclic compounds we are coming to and end in the next class we will be discussing about your uh, what is that bio macromolecules uh, hope so that it is clear thank you